What's up guys? Today we're gonna to discuss something that I'm kind of surprised I haven't talked about on here yet, which is how to mine Monero, as well as why you should start mining it. In fact, let's start with the why, because that's the most important thing. You should mine Monero because it is the fairest cryptocurrency that you could be mining. One of the things that makes different cryptocurrencies, well, different from one another, is the algorithms that you must run in order to mine them, as well as the consensus model. Is it a proof of work or a proof of stake cryptocurrency? But of course, proof of work is still the most popular one. But there's a serious centralization problem that occurs when a proof of work algorithm is too simple. Simple algorithms end up with application-specific integrated circuits, or ASICs, being designed to perform them very, very well. Now, ASICs are much older than cryptocurrencies are, and they're used in many places. Like a web server might have an ASIC built into it that only performs SSL encryptions. So it's going to take that very repetitive task away from the web server CPU. But in the cryptocurrency world, having an ASIC is about as close as you can get to having a money printer. A machine that was specifically designed to run the algorithms that mine those blocks on the blockchain. Now, the reason that ASICs centralized cryptocurrency mining is because they are so much more efficient at mining compared to GPUs and CPUs, the people with these ASICs pretty much end up controlling the blockchain. I mean, consumer hardware just cannot compete with these things. And so the ASIC miners are getting almost all of the block rewards while the people with regular hardware at home are getting nothing. And of course, there's not a lot of people out there that are willing to spend several thousand dollars on a machine that's just able to do one algorithm very quickly. So what happens is the people who can afford these ASICs, they end up not just getting one or two, they end up getting a whole bunch of them, which further centralizes this mining operation. And then when you start to consider that pretty much all of the ASICs that are being built in order to mine cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are being made in China, and the manufacturers often like to use these ASICs to mine some Bitcoin for themselves before they ship it out to you. Now you start to see the picture of centralization. It starts to become very clear. The ASIC manufacturers and the people that are using them have a tremendous control over these different networks. And of course, ASICs further exacerbate the e-waste problem that all electronics contribute to, but they contribute to it a lot more because there's no way to repurpose an ASIC. So once it dies or once a more efficient one is built, they just go right in the trash. Which is where Monero's random X algorithm comes in. This is the algorithm for mining Monero, which is based on the execution of random code and other memory heavy techniques. And because of this, Monero cannot be mined by ASICs. And it's actually even more efficient to mine Monero with CPUs than with graphics cards. So no need to upset all of the gamers and this also means that Monero can be mined with pretty much any kind of consumer hardware because everything's gonna have a CPU in it. And one last thing that I wanna talk about before I get into how to mine is Monero's tail emission. So a steady amount of 0.6 Monero is rewarded per block that is mined. And this is going to give the miners of Monero a steady incentive to keep on mining it and this also helps to keep the transaction fees low for the users of Monero, which of course helps with adoption because no one wants to use a cryptocurrency with high fees. And I really think that this is a much better block reward model than what Bitcoin has where the block reward gets cut in half about once every four years and it seems to cause a bit of disruption every time this happens because now miners are earning half as much and Eventually, the block reward is going to go to zero in Bitcoin's network, which could bring some very high transaction fees since that's the only way that miners can actually earn anything with it. So the job of being 
A Monero miner is one that looks like it's going to be a quite steady one for the foreseeable future. So let's get into the process now. Now there's a few things you're gonna need, a computer and an internet connection, of course, but you're also going to need a Monero wallet to receive those funds to. Now I recommend using the official Monero GUI wallet from getmonero.org, uh, or you can use the command line wallet. It's around here somewhere, oh yeah, here it is. So you can use the CLI wallet if you're a cool hacker man, because really all you need is this wallet address, and we're gonna plug that into another program. But I'll go ahead and walk you through the uh, process for setting this up. Now, when you first run the Monero GUI wallet, you'll be brought to the screen. Go ahead and choose your language here. Now for the mode selection, I'm gonna go ahead and do the simple mode just so that I can get a wallet address to show you guys how to mine. But if you're actually gonna be using Monero and mining Monero on the regular, then do the simple mode bootstrap so that it's going to download the blockchain to your computer. That's gonna help keep things more decentralized and give you better privacy. Um, and they also give you a warning here about uh, simple mode, you know, that you're gonna be using a third party server that has the blockchain on it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create a new wallet and we'll just go ahead and call it Kenny. And this is our recovery phrase for the wallet. So this is very important for you to write down and also make sure that nobody sees it because with this, anybody is able to access your wallet and access your funds. So I guess this is technically gonna be our wallet now. <laughs> All right, once we've got that written down, we can go to next and it's gonna ask us to fill some of these words in to make sure that we really, really got everything right. And of course, make multiple backups. Back this up, make sure they're safe backups where no one's gonna be able to access it. And then we're gonna set a password. It's also important to make sure this is a good password and, and make sure that you write the password down too, of course, but most important thing is the seed because even if you forget the password, you can just restore the wallet with the seed and the password's gonna be gone. So we'll go ahead and create a wallet and then we gotta enter that password again. All right, and now we have our wallet. So we just copy that to the clipboard. And then you can see what this wallet address is, but this is what we're gonna be using later. Of course, yours is gonna be different than mine. Now the software that we're gonna to use to actually mine Monero is called XMRig, and it's available at xmrig.com. It is free and open source, and it is available for different platforms, Windows, Ubuntu, Linux, Mac OS, and FreeBSD. So go ahead and select the option for your platform. Uh, and you don't need the CUDA plugins or anything like that. That's just so that you can mine Monero with a graphics card. But like I said earlier, it's much more efficient to mine Monero with a CPU. Even if you've got a really crappy CPU paired with like a 4090, like an RTX 4090, chances are you're gonna get a better hash rate with that CPU, trust me. So just ignore the CUDA stuff. Um, so I'm gonna go to Linux and I'm gonna download static CPU only. Sounds good to me. And this is another thing. So if you're using uh, Windows or any antivirus anywhere, uh, it's probably going to get, it's probably gonna flag XMRig as a virus. So just make sure that you mark it's not a virus in your antivirus program. And then we'll go ahead and download that. Now, once you've downloaded and extracted XMRig, you're gonna see these files, the config.json, the SHA-256-SUMS, and the XMRig executable. First thing we need to do is make some changes in the config.json. Uh, we want to look for the line that says user, and it says your wallet address. Go ahead and put your wallet address on that line. So we put it right in there. And the next thing we want to change to is our pool. So by default, it just goes to this uh, donation pool. Um, we want to find a pool to my Monero in. You can my Monero solo if you want, but it really, really lowers the chances of you actually getting anything because the only way for you to get any payout is to mine the whole block if you're gonna mine solo, uh, which is 
almost like winning the lottery, especially if you don't have a very high-end CPU or really multiple high-end CPUs to basically be mining in your own pool. So to find pools, we can go to miningpoolstats.stream forward slash Monero, and we can see all the different ones available. And like I said, one of the advantages of mining in a pool is you're going to get more frequent payouts. So you can see the minimum payout amount. Uh, basically, you would need to contribute that much of a hash rate towards mining the block in order to actually get that payout. If you don't end up contributing that much, like let's say you've only mined a very, very teeny amount of a block, then you might not meet the threshold for this minimum payout. So that's something to pay attention to when you're selecting a block or when you're selecting a pool rather, uh, how low is their minimum payout. Another thing you wanna take a look at are the pool fees as well. So these are gonna be paid to the maintainer of the pool out of whatever amount uh, that you've earned. And another thing to pay attention to is the total network hash rate of the pool. This is very, very important because we don't want any of these pools to end up having a majority, a 51% share of the hash rate on Monero's network. Now, the best pool to use is really uh, p2pool or peer-to-peerpool.io because this gives you the advantages of both worlds, right? So it gives you the advantage of mining solo in the sense that you're not having to pay any pool fees, but because you're in a pool and everybody is contributing their hash rate towards mining blocks, you're gonna get more frequent payouts because you guys are gonna end up splitting those blocks that the pool ends up mining. And their minimum payout is also the lowest, right? So it's 0.0004 XMR. So even if you contribute a teeny tiny bit to p2pool.io, there's a good chance that you're actually going to get some Monero paid to you for your efforts. But like I said, there's some extra software and configurations required to set this up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and link up with supportxmr.com. And so if we go here to the help section, they're gonna show us how to set it up. So we've already got the wallet address, we've already got the mining software. So let's go into configure settings. And here we can see that the miner is gonna want a pool URL in a port. So something like pool.supportxmr.com and the port 3333 is for the low starting diff. 5555 is for the medium starting diff. I think I'm gonna go with that since I do have a Threadripper. So we'll go ahead and copy that into our pool or into our URL field and I'll put 55.55. And another thing we can change to is the donate level. So by default, 1% of all of your mining efforts are gonna go to the developer of XMRig. If you don't want anything to go to there, you can change it to zero. Uh, or if you wanted to have a higher amount, you can obviously increase this percentage. Uh, so we'll go ahead and right quit this. And when you go to run XMRig, I recommend running it as root. And I'll show you why I recommend doing that. Actually, let me reduce this a little bit. So if I were to run it regularly without root, we get this little error here, Fail, failed to apply MSR mod, hash rate is going to be low. So what this MSR is all about is hardware prefetches. Basically, it's going to make the mining process more efficient. It's going to give us a higher hash rate if we have this enabled. And you might have to change some configurations in your BIOS to enable it or some configurations in your operating system to enable it. Uh, and then on Linux, you also need to run XMRig as root or if you're on Windows, you need to run it as an administrator in order to be using MSR. So that's a little bit of advice I wanted to give you. So we'll go ahead and run it again as root. And then you can see all the information that's coming up here. So you can see um, that I have huge pages enabled. This is another thing that helps with your hash rate. I have the one gigabyte pages disabled right now. So maybe I would wanna change that if I'm gonna start mining more often. And then uh, we have the actual info here. As far as the miner's concerned, you can see the pool 
that I'm in right here, as well as the IP address for the pool. And it looks like I'm getting some work to do. So why don't we go ahead and just let that run for a little bit. All right, so as you can see, my Threadripper has been putting in some work. So let me explain to you what all of this stuff that you're seeing in my terminal means. So of course, new job from pool support, xmr.com, and then the port 5555. That means that I'm mining as part of this specific pool, contributing my hash rate to it. The diff is the difficulty. So the higher that this number goes up, the more processing power that it's going to take, but also the higher the reward would be. Algorithm, Rx0 means that we're using random x. Height, this is the current block height that we're at. So you're going to see this steadily going up as we mine. So there you go. We are now mining Monero and Anytime we end up getting a block reward, that's just automatically going to get paid to our wallet. Again, assuming that the uh, block reward is enough, it meets all the requirements for our pool. And I'm sure you want to know, how much money am I actually going to earn doing this? But that is not why we mine Monero. We don't do it for money. We do it for Monero Chan.